Yeah, I think they did. And I, and I think there's a number of factors why. Look, on, on the field, there's no question that he's a difference maker, and they're losing a tremendous difference maker for them, someone that they drafted, that they developed, that they kind of helped become and stood by and helped become one of the most dynamic playmakers we've ever seen. And make no mistake, they tried. They tried to resign him. What changed everything for them was Devontae Adams' contract and what cut Tyreek and his representation wanted out of this contract. Now, I know people can say, well, just go ahead and just match it. Just do exactly, put the same kind of stipulations, the same kind of guarantees, guarantee the same kind of money that, that the Raiders did for Devontae and then move on from there. But see, what they have to do is that they have to start looking down the road as well. And 2023 is a big year for them. Okay, this football team has a lot of good players coming up that are going to need to be re-signed here, and they were up against it. And look, they, they had to look at it both ways. Look, we, if, we, if we sign Tyreek to this extension, then we understand we're going to have to forego a lot of these players that we have on our roster, and we just don't know how that's going to affect, especially the defensive side of the football in terms of us being able to compete. And they, didn't want, they were willing to go ahead and accept that, but, they did, but then they decided to, to go, hey, look, they get to a certain point, they draw the line in the sand and they say, fine, then we're going to have to move on from them. We're going to have to take the picks. And so I think now they're looking at it like this. They have two ones, two twos, two threes, two fours, and they have, I believe it is, somewhere upwards of six, seven round picks over the next two years. Over the next two years, just look at the hall of picks that they wind up having, or rather, that's, that's for this year, rather. They have all these picks this year. Two ones, two twos, two threes, two fours. I mean, that's just ridiculous in terms of what they are now able to have in terms of draft capital, cash available, and salary cap space. They're not going to be able to replace him. This is not a one-for-one -one exchange. You're not going to just draft a player this year and replace Tyreek Hill's production. But they have to look at this both short and long term. And that means next year, Juan Thornhill is going to want a new contract. Legereus Need is going to be coming up for a new contract. They still need to find a pass rusher, whether that be in the draft or some other potential veteran becoming available down the road that they now have the salary cap space and the cash space to go ahead and invest in. They, they, look, I mean, Nicole Hardman's going to wind up wanting a new contract. Orlando Brown needs a new contract. There's a lot of things at play here that they now have the ability to go ahead and address, but they are missing one of the most dynamic playmakers, again, that we have seen maybe in the past 10 to 15 years. And they are, and I am not trying to minimize that at all, but I understand the long term what they're trying to balance here and what Brett Veach, Brett Veach was trying to balance, and make no mistake about this also. He knows, the Kansas City Chiefs know, that they better make good on all this draft capital that they have now in this salary cap and cash expenditure that they now have available to them. Because if they don't, and they aren't able to put up the same kind of points, and they aren't the same explosive offense, and they aren't able to compete for that division title in the AFC West, it's all, a lot of it's going to come back to this one transaction, for sure. What's happened to you? What is wrong with you this morning? <laughs> I, 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 just, I mean, I, 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 you are unbelievable. I mean, how, how, well, how, can unbelievable. I, how can I not I, be? I'm, a, I'm about as balanced as I can be okay. right there, man. I'm trying to give you okay. both sides okay. of this. Okay. So right. what, what, on, so what, what's your problem with what I just said? Tell, tell me your problem. L Lewis, Lewis Riddick. Tell your problem. Time out. Listen, let me explain something to you. Lewis Riddick, even though I know I, I bless the airwaves every morning because I am Stephen A., and you see me, you see your brother on here having a good time, <laughs> laughing, making fun, doing my thing the whole bit. I will remind you, I've covered collective bargaining for over 25 years. And I got to tell you something. It's very, very obvious. One of the most obvious things in the world is the place uh -huh. of the salary cap because you know something. So many times when we think about the salary cap, we focus on the players when, in fact, it's just a management tool to minimize and control labor. That's all it is. We understand what's going on here. And they may, and they leave the players like crabs in a basket. You're fighting with one another from this pool of money that you have access to as opposed to the whole pot. We get all of this about the, 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 the you know, what the financial situation is. The reason why I'm looking mm -hmm. at you with such it, it just an incredulous attitude, Lewis Riddick, rhetorical question somewhat, but if you answer, make it quick. <laughs> All of those picks, what's the chances? Yeah. What are the chances of yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs finding another Tyreek Hill? I don't know. I can't give you a number. 
Yeah, you Probably can. not good. You know it's slim to none. Stop it. Stop it. It's not Probably good at not all. Good. It's slim to none. This okay, is the cheetah. Good. This is all the right. cheetah. This brother, okay, so what's this your, brother so what's is food, electrifying. Though? He's special. And he makes up, he makes up and covers a lot of the mistakes. The, the Kansas City Chiefs defense was nothing to write at home about last year. They were nothing to brag about. We all know that. But guess what? You knew that with Tyreek Hill, with Patrick Mahomes, with Travis Kelsey, a difference was going to be made. I understand the draft pick real estate. I get all of that. I totally understand it. But what I'm trying to say to you is this. If the Raiders could find a way to get Devontae Adams that money, why would you, as a Kansas City Chief, with a Super Bowl champion, two Super Bowl appearances, four straight trips to the AFC Championship game, and by the way, still elite, over 1,100 receiving yards for the last five years, 111 receptions last year, waving goodbye to defenders because he's so electrifying. He leaves opposing defenses absolutely positively petrified, petrified. And by virtue of that, by virtue of that, he actually protects your quarterback. Because if you get any kind of offensive line, I mean, Patrick Mahomes is scared the living hell out of people because they know who he's throwing down the field to. He made McCall Hardman look better. He helps Travis Kelsey look better, even though Travis Kelsey is great in his own right. This is Tyreek Hill, bro. This is Tyreek Hill. This is, not so, this is not some dude that we wondering about. We know who he is, what he is, and what he's mm -hmm. going to bring to the table with the quarterback you have mm -hmm. in place. Now, if you got Tua or you got Ryan Tannehill. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.